Hello friends, we keep up reviewing video cards based on AMD Radeon R938X. Today we have a model from Sapphire. Supposedly, Nvidia is almost ready to release another low-end model, while its main competitor keeps strengthening its positions in the middle price segment. We're curious why JTX 960 Ti release is suspended, as this card could become a fair alternative for R938X. Although, the current situation shows that AMD company has an indisputable priority in the price range within $300 to $350. Obviously, its partners took the advantage of this position and just swept the market with their own versions. And Sapphire Nitro Radeon R938X 4GD5 is one of these cards, and this is the model that our review is devoted to. The model comes in a colorful box of medium size, which includes a conventional description of key benefits of the video card. Inside we found a DVI 2D SAP adapter, a CD with drivers and utilities, a user's manual and a sticker with a manufacturer's logo. Quite a standard set for a mid-range solution. The external design of Sapphire Nitro Radeon r 938 x 4 gd 5 much resembles its younger model on the basis of Radeon R9380. The point is that they use the same cooling system. You can find more discrepancies on their reverse sides. Thus, they implemented a reinforcement plate that promotes heat dissipation in addition. The printed circuit board is almost the reference fashion with a 7-phase power subsystem, which involves 5 phases in GPU power converter. NCP8102PWM controller ensures their correct operation. In addition to Energy 7 features, it also supports adjustment of the GPU voltage. However, this option is only available when using the licensed utility. However, the range of available values is quite wide and makes plus 20 mV to the nominal rate. In addition, we would like to mention the implementation of chokes in ripped cases, resembling small radiators, which basically should have a positive effect on the cooling efficiency. An extra power is supplied by means of two 6-pin PCIe connectors, they have an easy access and nothing prevents connecting the appropriate cables. The video memory subsystem with a total capacity of 4GB is assembled by means of 8 LPDA chips with an effective frequency of 6000 MHz. The data is transferred via a 256-bit bus with a bandwidth of 192GB per second. Also, the graphics processor AMD Antigua XT features the factory overclocking. Its speed was increased from nominal 970 MHz to 1040 MHz or by 7% in relative units. The interface panel of the tested model has the same design of the reference version. There are four ports for the image display. The coolant system consists of two parts, a primary cooler and a reinforcement plate, which is in contact with the back side of the PCB in the area of the power converter. The radiator arrangement is of a special attention. Its design ensures heat dissipation from the GPU as well as from the memory chips and from power elements of VRM module. It is based on four heat pipes that are soldered to the copper base, which incorporate 40 aluminium plates, and the reeds are soldered too. The radiator is aired by means of two 100mm apistic fans, which are based on double ball bearings. The GPU temperature made 71 degrees at automatic mode of the coolant system. As you can see, the model from Sapphire is not the coldest fashion of AMD Radeon R9380X, but is one of the quietest. While idle, the fans stop rotating at all. They start their operation at minimum speed only, when the GPU temperature exceeds 51 to 52 degrees, and they return to the silent mode at 46 to 47 degrees. Such a scheme should provide an extended endurance of the fans, as well as should exclude their constant switching on and off when the GPU heating goes beyond this threshold value. During our first acquaintance with AMD Radeon R9 through ATX, we have found that the graphics cards which are built on its basis are about 8-9% ahead of AMD Radeon R9 through IT models and by 11-12% ahead of solutions based on GeForce GTX 960. It is therefore quite reasonable that we have got the similar results here. 
Moreover, the more expensive JTX 970 with a high default overclocking got ahead by an average of 34%. And also, AMD Radeon R9 390 was ahead of the new model, although by 23% on average. We're also curious about any reasons for a payment for the more powerful graphics card. In our country, the cost of Sapphire Nitro Radeon R9 380X for GD5 is about $310, while the prices for 4GB versions of GeForce TTX 960 and Radeon R9 380 are within the range of $250 to $280 and $280 to $300 respectively. A simple calculation shows that you would have to pay about 70% more for the first model and about 7% more for the second one. Obviously, you should decide for yourself how you're going to consider the price-performance ratio, but in our opinion, the productivity gain recovers fully the price difference in both cases. And if we compare Sapphire Nitro Radeon R9 3 for GD5 with its rivals, then almost all the tests showed its slight advantage. The average difference was about from 1 to 1 1.6%. It seems to be a little bit, but this factor can be decisive when choosing a video card based on R9 380X. We have managed to increase the GPU frequency up to 1211 MHz or by 16.4% relative to the nominal value. And this is the highest overclocking result as compared to all the others AMD Radeon R9 380X graphics cards, which have already been in our lab. However, it relates to the GPU only. On the contrary, the video memory overclocking facilities of the model from Sapphire appeared to be the worst and made plus 2.6% only relative to the nominal value. But please do not forget that the manufacturer has already increased the effective frequency of the video memory by 300 MHz. We should also note that during the testing the graphics core voltage was increased from 1144 to 1263 mV and the fan speed was forcibly fixed at the maximum level of 100%. Thus, the GPU temperature made 82 degrees, which in our opinion is a bit too much for such a cooling mode. The efficiency gain made almost 8% after the manual adjustment of the parameters, which is quite a good result for video cards built on the basis of R9 through ATX. Although it is unlikely that a lot of users would be willing to make a use of it due to the bad noise and temperature values after optimizing the parameters. Taking into consideration that AMD Radeon R9 380X has no real competitors and then almost all the graphics cards on its basis can be considered worth the money paid for. In this regard, we have the reason to consider what is then the unchallenged leader. While still making it difficult to give a definite answer, but we can say for sure that Sapphire Nitro Radeon R9 380X for GD5 will be one of the pretenders to this title. It has a comparable price and shows a slightly better performance than its counterparts. Also, it features higher overclocking facilities of the GPU. In addition, it supports all the latest technologies, including the fan disabling at low loads. In other words, it ensures zero-nose operation during internet surfing, watching movies and other simple tasks. And you are also unlikely to hear this card even by playing the games in relation to other PC components. But the installed coolant system is still not enough for the GPU overclocking. The GPU temperature may reach 82 degrees even at the maximum speed of the fans. Therefore, you should take into account this feature during the overclocking, as you can get almost an 8% gain in productivity by optimizing the video parameters. Thus, if you are interested in an extreme overclocking, then this graphics card is an excellent choice for its cost. Otherwise, you'd better consider the models with more efficient coolant systems. Best regards to you and do not forget to subscribe to our channel.